Hello and welcome to Rise of Humanity. I'm your host, Chris Karamaya, and today I'm very pleased to be joined by my guest, Lauren Zander. Lauren is a life coach, speaker, and co-founder of the Handel Group, which is an international corporate consulting and private coaching company based in New York City. Lauren has spent over 20 years coaching thousands of private clients to break through a limitation and create a life they love, all the way from entrepreneurs to Grammy Award winning musicians. Uh, Lauren is also the author of the awesome book, Maybe It's You, released in 2017, which is a no-nonsense manual for figuring, figuring out the life you really want and how to get there. So... It's great to have you on the show today, Lauren. Thank you so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. Fun. <laughs> so to begin with, tell me, how does one get to work as a coach with the likes of Michelle Williams and Hugh Jackman? Because that's pretty impressive. <laughs> wow. Um, well, you, what have I done? So it's just, it's really the word of mouth. and. Um, Hugh Jackman heard about me through Dr. Mark Hyman, and I've been Mark's coach for many years. And uh, Mark is, you know, pretty much that doctor to people, uh, to stars. And so uh, it happened that way. And then Hugh is very good friends with Michelle, and then that happened, right? Yeah. So it really is if I do a good job, people get loud about it. Yeah. And then I get called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always, you've obviously done very well for yourself to be to be working uh, at that kind of level. Yeah, it um, it really is. My dream come true is to be impacting people that are really committed to doing good in the world and are at the tippity top of their game, and to help them dream and and think even bigger than they already think. Yeah, right. That's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, um, just um what I got from your book. I mean, what's your motivation behind coaching? Because you don't have the, I mean, you say in your book, you don't have this big dramatic story yeah. you know, of how you came from, you know, just being a complete mess and you turn your whole life right. It's just like, it's just like you just do it. I mean, what's the, what's the motivation behind uh, what you do? I think, you know, there, I think in order to honor my good fortune, which is, you know, pretty, pretty healthy parents, pretty healthy lifestyle, like pretty simple, easy life that in order for me to deserve how good I got it, I, I was a person who should spend their life serving, right? Like doing something worthy of getting a good life, right? Like, so, so karmically speaking, I definitely believed I owed, right? And I owed big time and that my well-being was something to use to make a difference in the world. And what I learned growing up in that family um, was really something to teach about family and about, you know, everything, right? So I used everything I came from that was good to do good. Yeah, that's cool. And I think yeah. it shows that just, you know, everyone has something to teach. I mean, I think some people... They either say, you know, oh, I don't have a dramatic story, so what can I teach? Or mm -hmm. they say my story is too dramatic, too traumatic, and I just can't, <laughs> you know, fix myself. I mean, I think kind of what it shows, what you showed, is that you don't really need a, a story as such. Because, I mean, that, that's a big a big marketing thing these days is tell your story. But I think, uh, I mean, what's your take? Because you've kind of been hugely successful without a big dramatic story. Um. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think it matters. I yeah. think you have to take whatever, you know, my, my joke, which is not a ha ha, but um, is that we all come into life with our goodie bag, right? And if you think about a goodie bag at a kid's party, there's things you like in it. And then there's like, yeah, what's that? Right? Like there's junk in there and, <laughs> and you really are stuck with it, right? You have to figure out what to do with it. So there, there's this experience of that. Everybody got their goodie bag and you have to turn what's ever into that, like turn that into something sacred, worthy and honoring of life itself. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you count as everybody, 
because I also have a, you know, I also believe in we are one soul. Like in the end, we'll, we have to come together or else we'll be cycling a million times because we never figured that out. And mm-hmm. so I just think, yeah, so it, 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 I owed, everyone owes, then I can hold everyone accountable to what's in your goodie bag and how do you tell the story how do you tell the best story of what you got in your bag so that you love your life and that you live in honoring the world, your parent, like everything that needs honoring so that you can have a great life happens by how you tell your story. Yeah. Right. So, you know, even me telling the story like, wow, I got it so good. So I really owe Mm -hmm. is a way I tell the story where everyone's like, yeah, right. You better. What are you doing for humanity? Right. Like it puts everybody right with me, you know? Yeah. Right. So it, it really, so do I think the story really matters? Yes. Do I think any story can't be turned into something sacred? No, I think every story should be. Yeah. You know, all bases covered. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Yes. All roads lead back to how you talk about yourself and others and the world. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what do you, I mean, for people that do have the big, uh, you know, the traumatic, traumatic story and they, you know, kind of maybe stuck in the, um, you know, poor me kind of mentality. I imagine you've, you know, you've helped a lot of people out of that. I mean, how do you, how do you begin to help them get out of that mentality and start, you know, turning that into a, into something that they can use to serve humanity rather than be like victim to it? Yeah. Good question. I get in a lot of trouble for the answer because <laughs> it sounds really hardcore. Yeah. Right. And um, except if you've been through things that are hardcore, you're going to need a hardcore response to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so usually um, if I read the whole story and I know the whole person and I have heard everything I, on a list of things I can acknowledge about them and also point to where you're telling an unfair story. Mm-hmm. It, it works better than if you, I just cut to the chase right this second and go, you know what I make people do? Right. Um, but anyway, you ask the question. So, you know what I make people do? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I in trouble. Ready? Everybody brace yourself. Um, it is very rare that even in the scenario of, of anyone, no matter what age you are, right, where you're being bullied, where your father is abusive, where there really is something terribly wrong, right? But there really is the concept that you chose your choices in those moments. Like you stayed, you were quiet, you didn't tell your mother, you didn't do, you didn't do anything that could have blown up the situation and gotten you help. Mm. Right. So many scenarios, um, a person needs to figure out that they made the wrong choice yeah. and that they did have choice and that it's not really their fault that, I mean, my God, right. right? Then there's all the compassion you can let flow in for making the wrong choice and you didn't know better. And of course you didn't. And so that's what most kids would do or grownups. Right. But, but now that you're 30, now that you're right, you can look back and tell the story in a way that you can see your choice Because what ends up happening when I really go deep into a person's life is you find out that the, that the blind spot you had back then, which was, you know, made perfect sense. You were 12, Mm -hmm. right. Um, doesn't explain the blind spot you have now that you're dating that person that was just like your dad. Right. (laughs) And like, what, how do you explain it now? Other than you're still thinking love feels like that, like it did then. Right. And and we need to go back to then and wake you up to telling a different story like I blew it. I should have studied for the exam. Right. When you when you can own I ate too much, I drank too much. You then can make a promise not to do that again. And all of a sudden you're using your own life to to remap your life. Right. Like, oh, I did this wrong. I did this right. And it's not, you know, poor me pitiful. Yeah. It's I'm smarter now. 
right? So I have a list of many casualties throughout my career of picking the wrong partners, of having the wrong relationships, of, you know, should have quit, should have said no, should have, right? Like, and all of those shoulds Mm -hmm. are, uh, hindsight teaches me to make a new promise that I'm going to keep and pass a law in my own little village, right? And, And that type of learning where you could go back to your childhood, you could retell the story with more accountability, not that it was your fault or you asked for it or anybody meant to do any harm. It, you know, harm was done. No one wants to be harmful, right? So there's some premises that I use to heal a person and to heal their story and to take over the story so that they can start driving the rest of their life because it's really how they never took responsibility back then that explains why they're still dating or at the job they don't want. Like it's all connected and I have to rewire that to get you to reconnect. Yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I love it. And yeah, I love the the fact that you take such a direct approach. I mean, it's different, you know, everyone has a different style, but at the end of the day, you have to just wake up to that, you know, realization that you are, yeah, your choices led to that thing happening. And until you take responsibility for that, you're just going to continue to stay in the same, stuck in the same life. Yeah, Yeah, there really is a higher self. Hmm. And the higher self really knows you just put a cookie in your mouth and blamed your mother, right? (laughs) Like bad conversation with my mother equals four chocolate chip cookies, Mm -hmm. right? Really? (laughs) How old are you? (laughs) Right? <laughs> and when when does it just mean I I predictably will have a bad conversation with my mother? Is that really new or interesting? Didn't you bring up leave me alone? Like so, people never look at their behavior. They re, they only look at their reactions and justify their behaviors, and they don't look at themselves like their source of it. Like mm-hmm. I cause it, I can uncause it, I can recause it. Right. So what happens through the book and maybe it's you is it puts all the power back in your hands of there's a higher self and a lower self and a lower self is pretty addicted to vices, hiding, lying, not lying to, you know, be vindictive, but like managing appearances, managing what everybody else thinks. Like it's just, you know, it's a, if you don't sort that out, you you your higher self is locked in an attic. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. And um, I don't know if you specifically go into much of the sort of the philosophy, philosophical or kind of the psychology of it with your clients. But one of the things that kind of really transformed life for me is just the having that kind of trust that it's. You know, in that that higher self feeling that we live in a friendly universe and we're all connected, and there's just there's nothing really that so bad that can really happen to you. It's just even though it seems bad at the time, it's all part of the you know the development of your of your consciousness. Really, it's all there to help you if you just look at it in the right way. Yes, I yeah, I totally agree. I believe in Groundhog Day, right? Like it'll keep repeating. And yeah. giving you choices, and it's a little comical until you break through. Yeah. Right, and then it doesn't feel like the same day every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, um, can you just talk about why you picked the uh, title? I mean, obviously, we've kind of discussed it a little bit already, but why you picked the title? Maybe it's you. So Maybe It's You has been an ongoing joke Mm -hmm. for my whole career. Maybe it's me. Like like something's not working, maybe it's me. Something's working, maybe it's me. Like the maybe is the joke, right? Maybe it's me, right? (laughs) So, and, and it just, like there is no way to not have that joke land on why something's working or not working in your life. Mm-hmm. And I find it incredibly empowering to go, maybe it's me because then I can do something about it. Uh, and so it's just, it's stuck mm. and it's very on brand. And, you know, if you are into like nurturing and um, not tough love, like, right, you would stay away from maybe it's you, right? Yeah. 
right? Maybe it's them is feel like, you know, is really the opposite of, you know, it's not them, it's you. Right. Yeah. And so, and so everything's located inside of you. And if that, if that smacks you in a way that offends you, we are so not your coaching company because <laughs> yeah. we are going to kick your butt that you have all the power in the world to do exactly what you want. No, really. Yeah. Right. And That's take over your mind and take over your hands and take over your thoughts and take over how you live. But that's yeah. radical because people really don't get how much they aren't. Mm. Yeah, I'm a little like, you know, serving something that nobody really fully believes they need. Yeah. And do you, are they, yeah, are they just some people that just aren't ready for that kind of approach that would just be too, too much, too direct, too, too overwhelming. I, I don't think anybody wants to give up the cookie. Yeah. Right. Like you don't under, like the addiction, addictions rule the planet. Hmm. Sex addiction, drug addiction, alcohol is like, are you kidding? You want to know what the plagues are, right? Yeah. You know, there are modern day plagues and people are into them. <laughs> right like yeah. and defending them right not not really defending you know how many people are defending you know watching tv all night versus meditation for 20 minutes yeah right like you don't want to know right yeah <laughs> it's, that's not right and how many people know the right answer yeah definitely <laughs> right they all know the right answer yeah and they're all picking the wrong thing. That's my human race. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, hey, right? We're into, right? And I understand a vice, right? Next, you know, I understand. Yeah. So anyway, it's, you have to want a powerful life. Like I, you really have to want things that you can't get without having integrity. Mm-hmm. Right. You want the body. You want the husband. You want the marriage. You want the sex. You want the, like you have to really want a lot in order to figure out integrity. Yeah. And one of the uh, things that I like in the book is that, I mean, obviously the title is Maybe It's You, but one of the, <laughs> one of the chapters is Maybe It's You with the Maybe crossed out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually how we wanted the cover of the book to be. Right. Right, but you know, again, the world is not prepared for it's so straight. For some, yeah. ac according to our publisher. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think people are getting there though <laughs> one day. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, I seem to be doing. We're doing good, right? Yeah. Like the PM and and. The clients are very happy, yeah. very, very happy. If you want to, but you have to want to kick your own ass. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if you're committed and then you're going to thrive from having someone to, to kick you in the butt because you know it's just going to get you uh, where you want to go quicker. Oh, it, it is. It works. Yeah. It isn't yeah. that it doesn't work, but everybody really kind of knows that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows the diet works. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just the um yeah i mean there's the world's abundant with strategies on how to do things how to start a business how to lose weight how to get a new relationship but if you don't mm. have that that mental component which uh, obviously is such a huge part of your teaching then you're gonna struggle to get there you know if at all really yeah that's you know the reason Mark Hyman, Dr. Mark Hyman has been working with me and, you know, promoting the Handel method and the book and everything I do is because there's a, you know, it, it isn't that the information for how to really be healthy and well and ultra mind wellness, like everything is you like it, it really is available to be profoundly healthy. Mm -hmm. The issue is not how to do it. It's that people won't do it yeah, and even want to live, right? You know, right. So that rub, like where that, like what's up with that, yeah. right? 
Um, you know, you'd rather be a diabetic. No, you, you don't, you, you have three kids. They all need you. Look at them. They're fat too. Like what's happening here, right? Can you, <laughs> like, is this okay with you? And the parent will cry and say, absolutely not. In which case something has to happen with awareness and one's mind and one's relationship to oneself. It's really the perfect place to pick someone up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always, I like to use the, the uh, analogy of food because I know like if I ever became a new like a diet coach or whatever I would focus like probably 90% on the mindset I mean you can teach someone how to like eat paleo diet in five minutes but it doesn't mean that they're gonna right. get anywhere close to implementing it on a like a serious basis yeah no I just um work so that I teach food first Mm -hmm. Right. Where I put you on a diet and I put in promises and consequences, not because I care about your waist size or how cute you look in your jeans, mm -hmm. but because the most fundamental relationship you're having is eating every day. Right. Yep. Like you're you're doing it all day long. And that hand to mouth. Right. Like what you put in, it, it either is conscious or unconscious. Right. Like how you doing on that moment? And it is that moment that the higher self like, no, I'm going to like I'm sticking to the diet. I'm sticking to and it's healthy. It's a big salad with grilled chicken. And <laughs> right. It's there's nothing lacking in it. Right. Yep. But the person having to deal with that choice for the first time has to truly fight their inner dialogue, not to skip the meal, say it's boring, have a cookie, right? Like do shenanigans, right? Like get in there and start. That right there is the most perfect place to teach a person be present, hmm. right? And and then after you're present, right, you can then start to do with, deal with that inner dialogue. Like it's moody, it's unhappy, it complained the whole time, right? Versus it knows how to love anything. Right. Like if I tell my head to love a salad, it should love the salad. Right. Like, hello, anybody in there want to <laughs> control and conduct? So the handle method is all about your inner dialogue and taking over the narrative. And it is shocking how little people think they have power in like to edit and manage and deal with. Right. Their own mind mm. and food is one of the most awesome places we feel entitled, bratty, like immature, like we have not grown up, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's where I start in order to do everything else, right? You don't even come to me for your body, but I'm gonna teach you food and managing your mind and your inner dialogue so that when it's time to go get the real big job, you mm. know, or get divorced or anything that's scary as real, get out, right? Like, yeah, you've got real issues we yeah. need to deal with, but I'm not even pretending I'm going to teach you how to deal with them until you even own your own inner dialogue. Yeah, that's awesome. Is that, so do you see it as like um, any area that you improve in your life will have some sort of knock-on effect to every other area of your life? Uh, Absolutely. I, I am actually blown away by... Um, Still, so, you know, one of the things I do in the book is I ask people for their haunting memories, mm. right? Like their hauntings. And um, hauntings carry in how you like, because of this event, you started telling the story about yourself, about your life, about others, and learned whatever lessons you learned from that haunting moment. Mm -hmm. And so it, it shaped you mm -hmm. dramatically whether you know it or not, or can figure that out or not, or how, and trust me, you don't only have three, you have many. Okay. It shaped your belief system. And so when I get a person to discover that that haunting is relative, like the way they tell the story, they never ask, that, like, you know, so imagine that one of people's big hauntings are their parents' divorces. Mm -hmm. What a, not a shocker. Okay. And you don't really, all you know is your dad ended up with someone, you know, and married within the year and she was pregnant. Right. And you're, you're 27 and you have no, and your mother won't talk to your father. And 
you are, you are a workaholic and you have no love life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> and I go, wow, I think you, you know, gave up on your bottom half of your body and everything when you were that age, you were 13. Let's go talk to your mom about what happened. Let's go talk to your dad about what happened. Let's go get the whole story and really see what there is to see about you. Right. And mm. that chick will go do that. Right. Like after I make her and, um, we'll find out that, she had it all wrong. She didn't understand. She cried. She figured out she, like, she literally will change the entire narrative, her entire love relationship, her entire understanding of parent child. And now she's more of a grown up. Like, everything will change in one conversation. Yeah. And all of a sudden, losing weight, um, wanting the different, like she couldn't figure out what career she really wanted. And then all of a sudden she has to move to California. Like, <laughs> like, like literally a blocked artery mm. gets unblocked. And all of a sudden you can climb mountains and your whole life takes off. Yeah. That happens with every client. That's awesome. <laughs> right. So, and that's the fun, like the deep fun of the spiritual understanding of the method that, that you're blocking yourself and that your beliefs are connected and that you are telling that story in a way that ha holds you as a character, holds everybody else as a character, and that to change all the characters, you're the main character. Let's go. What are we doing? Mm. Right? And, and taking over the narrative, taking over that inner dialogue, taking over your relationships, taking over designing your life, and that everything that's not working in your life, maybe it's you, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you so much power to like clean up your mess. And so that's, you know, by the time I leave a person, which is, you know, and trust me, I'm trying to get in and out as fast as possible, mm -hmm. right? Like, I want to see how fast the method could work. I want to see if it could work with a book without me being there. Like, all of this is way more interesting in, in it just being one plus one is two. Like, how do I make this uncommon knowledge common? Yeah. Right? That's the game. That's awesome. And so the book, obviously, the book then is based on the the uh, private coaching that you do is that is that how you faced it yes yeah i have been i have i developed i actually got to develop the method 10 over 10 years ago right. um at mit okay on like i literally had a human study going on where we were managing me for years on the answers and the impact i was having on the students being way more productive in their whole lives and that, and then I got to teach it from the front of the room, like with 70 students, right? So, yeah. and, you know, TAs and people handing in their homework and designing all the homework so I didn't have to be there one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, so it was awesome, right? So I developed the method so as to not be there. Yeah. Even though if I was coaching you, you'd be learning the method, you'd understand it. But, you know, you, you would just be thinking you were um, going through a process. Yeah. So, you wouldn't get it was a book. Yeah, that's cool. So do you, do you like, um, do you have like a team of coaches and do you sell coaching packages? I mean, what, what kind of Yes, like, yeah. all of the above. Yeah. We have a private coaching division, which is one-on-one -on -one coaches who work full-time, been with us for years, greatest people, unbelievable coaches, mm -hmm. right? So we have... And they're full-time staff. And then we have a coaching training program, which will have another 15 people in it. And they're becoming coaches. You can either license it or come work for me. Um, so either way, it, that works out great. And then there is a corporate division. So we, like the, the majority of our work, or really how we make a lot of money, is um, through big corporate clients and really doing seminars and changing cultures and working for corporations and doing executive coaching. And then um, for, and we have this other product, which I'm really proud of, which is called Inner You, mm -hmm. which is community-based, like really cheap, 
10 sessions recorded with me. It took me three years to make those 10 sessions. And it has a whole digital, like, do your homework. A coach could read it. You can talk to other people. You can get a buddy. Because a lot of what we do works better if you're not doing it alone. Yeah. So, you know, have a prom- someone's holding your promises. We have coaches on there that you can get free coaching because you signed up for the program. So I, I'm doing my darndest to make it all price points. And we have, you know, no one, no one even knows I'm coaching, right? Most people have been for the last 15, 20 years working with other coaches for my company. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Um, so what, obviously, you can do the book yourself and obviously you've written that book so you can people can try and get results without ever having to you know work with you directly well i mean obviously i suppose working with a coach will coach will provide faster results but i mean what do you say to people who kind of they you know they have a dream and they want to live this amazing life but they just see it you know it's just some far off distant thing that it feels like it'll be years before every ever materializes i mean how what sort of, I mean, results can people get in, in, in like the shortest time frame? Uh, I, uh, so I just, yes, so I'll, I'll give a cute little story. Uh, yeah. And I, <laughs> so I started work, working with this woman, uh, you know, within the last year. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a dream of being a partner, she, here, underlined she. <laughs> Um, had a dream of being a partner in one of the top funds on earth. Okay. Yeah. And um, the truth is she was right online, but she was, you know, maybe years, a few years away, but her dream was to be the number one person running her division. Okay. And so we got that she would have to leave this company this great, fantastic life of hers, if she really wanted to be number one, because she's not going to be number one for four to six years, right? And and it's just not that cool for her. We, She gets another job, and she is so excited, and she's number one, and she gets everything she wants. And then what happens? The person who was holding her job for the four to six years, like that she was never getting it in the very place she wished she could have stayed, mm-hmm. left. <laughs> So within seven months, something that was absolutely never happening or wasn't happening for years, so much so that she made all this effort to leave. When she walked in to leave, they offered her, like they were like freaked out to counter offer her. Yeah. And her dream came true. And we screamed, like she like calls me late at night because we're screaming, did she do this? Did this just happen? Was this always going to happen? Did every step she take have to do that so it all happened, right? So the, the relationship to, you know, here, go, let's do it this way. I want to run a marathon. I've never run ever in my life, right? So you wouldn't put the marathon on for this year. Maybe you'd put it on for next year. Right. Maybe. Yeah. But you would go, I- I'm going to get a buddy. I'm go- And you don't even notice you're not dating and you're divorced, right? But you decide you're going to run a marathon, right? Because you want the body and you want the shape and you want to meet people. Like you have no idea what could happen within three weeks of, of, of being in that new life. Mm. So, so people hold change like it's this, you know, move from the East Coast to the West Coast. How am I ever going to change? <laughs> How am I going to go back to school? How am I going to get remarried? How am I going to how, you know, I'm 37 years old. How am I ever going to have a family? Right. And I'm like, it's one day away. <laughs> right. It's, it's not linear in the way it, it isn't that it might not be. You go, I want to be a doctor and you're, yes, you're seven years away. Yeah. Right. So there's, there's time and reality, but then there also is magic, which is the unexplainable ability to make things happen that, you know, Steve Jobs is dead. And what did he get done by the time he was in his 50s? Mm. That's frightening. (laughs) Right. And it wasn't because he went to the right schools. Right. It was something else. So I I believe in that 
And that's what I help people tap into. And that's what the book does. And if, and if you can't handle this conversation, you can't handle ha- thinking about having integrity. You can't handle any discipline. Definitely run from my stuff. Yeah, nice. Run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose it's a, there's an element, I mean, it varies from different people's you know journeys, but there's an element of uh, stepping into the unknown as well. If you want to, you know, allow those rapid kind of, uh, shifts to come to come about I mean what do you say to people who you know are afraid of taking risks and take taking leaps of faith I mean do you ever have to coach people through that where there's something it's obvious you need to do it but they just might be way too terrified because they think it might all go completely wrong oh I mean I you wouldn't come to me unless you were willing to do the work right like yeah. willing to deal but in regards to you know, a guy who just, you know, I'm thinking of a client, right? He was 24, uh, figured out he was gay and was mortified. Like, what do I do? Hmm. Right? Like, what do I do? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Right. And, you know, so for me to be able to give him flirt, like we're going to flirt, we're going to learn how to flirt. We're going to connect eyes. We're going to like, I'm, you're going to tell me whose eyes you connected to four times a day. You're going to walk outside and you're going to look and you're going to look for who you think is gay and you're going to connect eyes, right? You need to do four people a day. Tell, come back and tell me about them at the end of every day. Mm-hmm. You do, he did, for, forget it, right? Six weeks of flirting, like connecting eyes, right? Then we graduated to saying hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. I know it sounds so dangerous, right? It did to him, right? He was so cute, right? So then we graduated to hello. And then, you know, before you knew it, he was asked out by somebody. He didn't want to go out with them. So he had to like, that was mortifying. He lied, said yes, and then like gave him the wrong phone number, right? So then we had to deal with the next round of like, what do you do? <laughs> Okay, you can't say no. That's your next problem. Okay, great. So, like, we just, so people learn by taking the right actions, and the actions have to be, you know, small enough or clear enough, or, you know, like you can do that, right? You can, you know, so a person can turn off all their screens at 10 p.m. and read a book, relax, hang out with their husband, wife, like they, lover, whatever, right? Like stop with the screen business. Yeah. Right. So that, and then see what opens up about your imagination. Right. And then for three days they sleep, they go to bed at 10. Right. Do you understand? And all of a sudden now they're up at 6 Mm a.m. So what are we going to do at 6 a.m. now that you've changed your life because you've turned off the screens? Right. So it's so simple to make changes and people pretend it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm-mm. But you can't do it in a vacuum and you need a buddy. Yeah. And you need to promise it to someone. And a human usually needs a consequence to keep a promise mm. is another thing I really teach that no one appreciates, but it really is true. Yeah. And, yeah. And what do you think about the um the kind of uh the the effect that investing money has as well? Do you think that, you know, charging you know a a, a premium price, do you think that is another kind of motivator, you know, I've invested this money, you know, I've this coach charged me this much money now I have to take action. Do you find that that's uh, something which, you know, pushes people along as well? Not enough. No. <laughs> you would think. Yeah. You would think it would do it because the person who could afford it might be someone who already is taking things for granted. Mm. You know, they, you know, yeah. um, that's not like, I have not found money to be, no, like from time to time, I can think of certain clients that really invested Mm. and, and took it very seriously because they really wanted to think differently. And they really came from a very kind of strict, limited cultural background. 
And so they knew they were going spiritual when they went with me. They knew they were going with integrity when they, like they wanted it and they were spending a lot uh, to them, a lot of money yeah. on it. So yes, I, I, there are people that it like, but those people get A's anyway. They always get an A at what they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the per, you know, there are people who have A personalities and that if they say, you know, they, they will do it. That's very different than giving them something to do that they are scared out of their minds to do. Yeah. But homework, promises, you know, showing up, right? So it, people are very different about discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hmm. So, I mean, what, if you had to sum it up, what would you say is the, like, the, or the, the biggest things that really, you know, cause people to settle for a, a mediocre life and, you know, and stop per dreaming big? Um, most people don't realize that they're an apple off their parents' tree Mm. and that they are repeating a better version of their parents' scene, not a radically new version or an inspired, their own version, but very much a reaction and a continuum unless they've wildly drawn a line in the sand, right? Like, I'm not going to end up like you. I'm going to college. I'm like, like, unless they like had a hissy fit yeah, and know that they went, you know, they left the country. They, they, they are gay. They like, they're so different. They, they own it. Right. But most people are, are, are surprisingly turning into their parents in ways that they don't, that I'm still, like, I shock them, Mm. right? Like, so this woman who, you know, was a real estate broker who is so unhappy as a real estate broker, like, she does not want to be one, Mm -hmm. right? She's an artist, right? And smart, right? Like, you know, if she went to Harvard or Yale, right? So overachiever, goody two-shoes, but miserable in her career, And then if you look at her mother, right, very successful family, but like that woman has never been happy about what she was doing. She's managing the family. She's managing this. She's done like, like, is your mother happy? Is anybody like she is literally her mother's child. And it never dawned on her that because she's in something different, because she's not the same exactly as her mother, she could go, I'm not doing what she did. And I'm like, are you kidding? You are. (laughs) And then that revelation, that's the revelation people aren't having. How much you're like your parents. Yeah. Right. And that's not evolution. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. One of the things that I I like that you say in your book is you talk about finding yourself in other people's stories. Uh, And I think Mm. because, I mean, do you think there's just like really there's a limited amount of patterns that people can play out? And if you go and look at everyone's story, you'll find that you're probably mirroring or mirroring it in some way. I don't know. There is, I haven't been bored one minute of my life with getting that. Like I have the privilege of reading all of these homeworks. Yeah. Right. And, um, patterns, um, are macro. Like there's not, chameleon patterns. You're, so the, the point that you're making about that there are predictable patterns given this or this or that and, and how to help someone break out of their own patterns, mm-hmm. that, thank God, is, doesn't have an infinity to it. <laughs> but the amount of variations, yeah. right, of, of facets toward that pattern still blow my mind on the majesty of this world of being alive. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's very beautiful, sad, sick, interesting, deep, love, ugly, like everything gets covered. Everything. Yeah. I mean, it must, it must, um, just have completely, you know, 
the more you've got into this and the more successful you've become it must and the more people you've helped it obviously must have transformed you you know as a person as well helping all these people being able to experience that to uh, that all the stories and all the transformation and everything yeah i i really think i can't believe how good my job is like i can't <laughs> believe i get to like i get to I get to love people mm. and design with their lives there. Like I really get to play at the core in my mind with God, right? Like with, with the original intention of being alive, Yeah. right? Where, where, where people don't even understand design your life is plausible. Mm. Like they don't even get it. Yeah. And it's so what the point is, right? <laughs> like, Hey, that John Lennon song, I swear, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hello, you. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, I definitely love my job. I definitely love, love my, co- love what we're, I'm getting to do. Yeah. Right. Love it. Born to do it's it. It's dope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I am permanently high. <laughs> I am permanently high and I am not, well, you know, on coffee, but other than coffee, yeah. um, I am permanently high. Yeah. You're really selling the coaching industry here. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, I, I am, I was there when there wasn't an industry. Yeah. Right. I really helped build that industry. Right. Like I was there. Mm. Right. I feel I feel like a founding member of something that didn't exist. Nice. Right. And uh, hopefully if my as my company grows and honors that what it's meant to be, that will be that'll be the case. Yeah. That'll be the case. Nice. So what's um, what's your greatest desire just for people who come across your book, come across your work and. um do it. <laughs> I, I swear to God, take a friend, take your best friend, do it like the artist way, care about the details of your life in a way that help you fall in love with yourself and, and deal. I swear you're living in the worst case scenario. This, it only gets better. It, I, I didn't say it was easy. It just gets much better from here and you deserve it. You, we need it. Every last one of us. Right. And I'll take anyone this round, this hundred year round. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Right. That's so cool. So, um, would you, uh, would you like to share with the listeners where they can uh, find out more about, um, you and uh, your work so they can check that out sure i mean we have ted talks and videos and i'm trying to give it away every which every which way so if you look us up at hand at handel group h-a-n-d-e-l group g-r-o-u-p um you will find our website um if you want my best program for the least amount of money at all, and you really get a community and you get a buddy and you can really get your life to change, you will do inner you, Mm -hmm. right? And um, if you love reading a book, get Maybe It's You on Amazon or at Barnes and Noble or wherever you get your books. Um, It it will rock you if you read it. Um, And then if you do it with someone, it will change your life completely, completely, completely. Anyway, um, and then if you want to pay for, you know, and if you are in the in the market for an executive coach or a life coach, um, just, you know, schedule a consultation with us. Um, we are so caring about how much money you have, what you can afford, not like I am so not a money grubber. I won't take your money mm-hmm. um, unless I think it really will benefit you and that you like it. And I'll give you back your money if you're not happy. Like I am that girl. And we run that company. So um, all things are available. And uh, yeah, thank you for asking. Awesome. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today and uh, having this uh, awesome conversation with you. So just uh, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom today. Well, I I have one question for you. 
what, tell me a promise that you're not, that you haven't exactly made yet, that if you made would be very badass of you. Like make a, like a big, you know, bold, you know what I should promise, Lauren? You know, what should you promise? Cute man. Come on. I want to promise in front, just in front of your audience. It's okay. Okay. I, well, I'm working on my launching my own coaching business and yeah, it has been a, the last six, I quit my job six months ago to do it and I've been toiling away diligently, but it's, it's, I've faced some huge challenges and huge resistance, but I suppose my biggest promise is that in 2018, my, I will ensure that my coaching services are up and available and for people to uh, to uh, enroll can i give you advice yeah. you want some coaching <laughs> you want some coaching <laughs> you seem to be in my field yeah. <laughs> um so i'm going to tell you what i did in the first year that started my practice yeah i had to i had a promise to share like find a human and tell three people a day about what i'm doing right and I, ha I, I, I literally, I'd do it on the subway. Like I was not coming. I didn't, I think I, oh, ready for me. I didn't get my tasty delight at night unless I had done my three that day. Yeah. I literally would go down the block on the way to tasty delight to do one more. I would stop someone in the middle of the road. <laughs> okay. Cause like I'm that funny and willing to be at risk. Um, so within the first six months, I didn't have a website. I didn't even have a business card. And I had my first 20 clients. Nice. <laughs> and I was, tw I was 28. No one looked at me like I made sense. Yeah. Right. Does that, so yeah. it, how do you feel about that promise? Yeah, that sounds cool. I think, I think maybe I'm getting a, looking at it i've gotten a bit too caught up in like the grand opening and it's better just to start and <laughs> stop waiting <laughs> um it, it's most important that you build your confidence that you have coaching capac like that you can make a difference with someone the more you make a difference with someone so even if you gave away free sessions like I'm starting my coaching practice, I'm launching in April and I'm charging 50 bucks an hour or I'm doing this, but the first two sessions are free. Would you like to try? Right? Cut it out, get on the court, start playing. Magic happens while you're there, not waiting to eventually get there. What do you think? Do I get three conversations a day that lead to coaching? Like you're, I don't care if they're a no. It's not about getting a yes. It's about opening your mouth and pitching. Yeah. Right? You're a rainmaker. Coaches have to be rainmakers. So what do you think? You're a yes. Three a day. Okay, what's your consequence? What 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 do what how do you get dinged at night? Or how, what what do we take away that won't hurt you, but you keep that promise, that's the consequence. And it will work. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Go for screens. Go for <laughs> cocktails. Go for sugar. Like, I won't get sugar the whole next day. Uh-huh. I know, right? Simple. Don't even work. That's a good I think. Uh, no dessert, no alcohol, no sugar one. the next day. <laughs> if you don't keep your three, you get no sugar yeah. next day. If you break this promise and then don't keep it, right? You break the promise, then you don't keep the consequence and you blow this whole thing off. Mm -hmm. You have to send me an email and break up with me. Mm -hmm. And I promise to be awesome and go, that's too bad. I guess that's all right. Let me know if you ever want to make the new problem. All right. You understand? I will be so sweet. Or you'll be a little hexed. And I don't recommend that. I have a, wit I have a witching effect. And I wouldn't invoke it. I'd get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to take the deal? Yeah. I mean, how how long did you do it for? Was it just until you got to the point where it just became till twenty clients? Once you get okay. to twenty, you're flying. You're flying. Till you get to twenty, honey. 
three a day. And then if it ever goes down, you just go back to the three a day or two a day or twice a week or start getting speaking engagements. It'll start rolling. Yeah. It's very addictive. If it's really your calling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've wanted to do it for years. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's your calling, it once you have clients, you'll want more. It's very, it's very exciting. And you really are playing a role in people's lives and, and it's, it's profound to care that much. And it's the best. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I don't think it's um coincidence that we had this conversation today. <laughs> That's what I think I, I needed to hear this. <laughs> See? Maybe, maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. <laughs> See? See how life can work? I love it. <laughs> Okay, so you officially have the promise you have to break up with me if you don't keep it. You don't get sugar the next day if you don't keep your three. And the three have to be potentials. Someone you can coach who can afford you. No, you can't talk to the homeless person. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing personal. Yeah. <laughs> you understand, yeah. right? It has to be legitimate. And you can offer about two free sessions and then quit. Okay, nothing more than two. Or else, or else it won't work. Two. Two. Okay. And that's it, cute man. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that. A little excited. kick in the pants. little kick in the pants. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. That, I swear to God, I just changed your life. I should. <laughs> I wish I'd have spoken to you six months ago. <laughs> um, you really should. Have. But you, but, and then everyone who's listening. Yeah. What you can get is one perfect little promise. Like it's not that hard and it's scary, but it's not that hard. Plus a good consequence forces you to make change. And how many days of him keeping that promise where it actually really starts to work and make it more exciting? How many weeks before he likes his promise? Right? It's about three. Okay. Okay. But three keeping it every day. Yeah. And then you can take off Saturday and Sunday. Awesome. <laughs> right. But if you do it on Saturday and Sunday, it doesn't roll into the next week. Okay. Three a day. Okay, good. See, see how you got to get all the loopholes out of a human too. <laughs> nice. This is why we need lawyers <laughs> because we're loophole-y. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you and good luck to anyone who listens to this. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. So, all right. <laughs> that is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and got some really great takeaways from this talk today. And if you are looking to start creating a life that you love, uh, then definitely check out Lauren's book and her company. I will uh, stick all the uh, links that you need in the show notes so you can check that all out. So, Thank you all so much for listening and I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.